Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the downstairs at the Mama. Uh, this is a new space, it's, uh, uh, but it's part of an organization that's been around for, going to be going into its 55th year, La Mama. Uh, I want to welcome you here. You're going to start to see a lot of really interesting work uh, in this space for the next coming years. Um, uh, this space is unique in that uh, it's sort of uh, designed to do uh, many different things. Um, uh, it's to uh, basically expand, uh, over the 55 years, MAMA has really expanded beyond just being a performing arts uh, center. It's moved into education, obviously community program, international exchange, and also art and technology and integration of those and presenting works uh, that are both uh, related to new media and performance. So those types of things are going to be happening in this space and sort of circulating through all together. Um, and uh, we, um, we're really happy that you're here. Uh, we hope that you tell your friends. Um, and then a little bit about Culture Hub. Uh, Culture Hub was uh, founded by the Lama and also the Seoul Institute of the Arts in Korea. Um, and uh, the Seoul Institute of the Arts was one of the first contemporary <coughs> art schools uh, in Korea. Uh, and they've been working with the Lama for several decades and they wanted to sort of extend that window uh, and those interactions uh, by using the internet. So we uh, formed Culture Hub to uh, create a studio that was about researching how people collaborate using the internet, both from an educational standpoint, but also in an art making space. Uh, so uh, that's a little bit about who we are. I hope that you will uh, join us on uh, Facebook uh, or uh, join our mailing list. Uh, we have a lot of uh, events that are uh, very reasonable um, and um, very diverse. Uh, now, uh, without further ado, I'm going to uh, give you a toast to Mangalbot. Uh, I think this is a really special uh, performance. We're really fortunate to have uh, this amazing creative team. And I want to give a special thanks to Harvest Works uh, and Carol uh, uh, Parkinson in particular, uh, who has um, uh, co-produced this event with us. And I think that's a, a pretty exciting moment uh, that um, organizations that are like-minded can come together in, in a way that supports an artist. Uh, and a project um, uh, together. So um, thanks to Harvest Works, and uh, without further ado, uh, I give you those mangoa. Very importantly, um, please silence your cell phones uh, if you haven't already, and uh, fire. Uh, Fire exits, you've got uh, two going back that way that will get you to Fourth Street, uh, elevator, fire exit, both sides of the building, and then you also have a fire exit back here in this corner that will uh, allow you to get out in the case of an emergency uh, to Third Street. Okay, thank you. In the 4th century in Koguryo, ancient Korea, Prime Minister Wang Sun-nak built a new string instrument. When he composed and performed 100 pieces on this new instrument, a black crane, bird of sky. Common harp, 
flew to the instrument. So it was named the Black Crane Zither. Later, it was called Komungo, meaning Black Zither. In 2010, I was in Jakarta, Indonesia to perform at Salihara Festival. One day, I entered Puppet Museum with four tall puppets at the entrance. Their faces projected such an intense light that I could hardly look at them, but I took photos of them without really seeing them well. A little afterwards, I felt weak and almost fainted. A festival staff person accompanying me at that time asked, 
Are you possessed by an evil spirit? I was sitting on the floor for a while until I got better. I then continued upstairs to view the exhibition. At the exit pathway, there was a puppet store. I did not pay attention to those souvenir puppets, but all of a sudden, my eyes are caught by one in a glass case. It was a highly crafted puppet made by a renowned artist and consequently the most expensive one in the store. I was attracted by Jatayu, mystical bird in Indonesia and India, which saved Shita princess when she was kidnapped in epic Ramayana. Jatayu tried to rescue Shita from Ravana when Ravana was on his way to Lanka after kidnapping Shita. I thought to myself, might it be true that Jatayu saved me from an evil spirit just before? I had to buy the Jatayu puppet, believing that Jatayu would protect me further from any disaster or obstacle that may occur in the future. That night, I suddenly woke up with chest pressure and had a strong feeling of something pushing on my chest and I was breathing difficultly. My intuition had me check my photos that I took at the museum. Most of them were blasted by the bright lights that I saw when I entered the museum. I found one good one. This puppet was wrapped tightly in many layers with a long, fat, strong snake all around the upper chest. Oh my God. That is what I felt on my chest and couldn't breathe well in my sleeping. I am connected to the puppets. I never had an experience like this in my life. But quickly, I had a smile on my face. I am a real artist. Two months later, I was invited to International Society for Improvised Music, held at University of Santa Cruz, California. I had a driver who took care of my comungo early each morning and late night. One day, he took off his hat and told me, I know who you are. Please, let me introduce myself to you. I am not a humble driver, but I am a Native American Indian chief. He said that he had worked at a lawyer's office, but six months ago had a heart attack. He refused to have an operation, but instead joined a ritual with his people. He was completely cured by this ritual, 
and from this experience, he understood that he was called to offer rituals for his people. He told me, I have to meet four nobles from each direction, and you are the one from the West. He said, I will bring you eagle feathers. Next day, he brought four feathers that had been handed down from an older chief and used in sacred rituals by past generations. He asked me to touch them. That night, when he picked me up a little after midnight, after a long rehearsal, I heard an owl crying. Puongi. Under halo, around shining full moon. I had heard a story like that, but it was happening before my very eyes. Next day, I was on the airplane on my way back to New York. It was a dark evening, and we must have been around Arizona or Colorado in the air. I noticed a bright area outside, near the aircraft, that looked like a big form of cloud, but it wasn't. The illumination light on the air was suspicious. Out of curiosity, I stared at it for a while. All of a sudden, I saw four light forms running fast, coming out underneath the bright area. Then all of them were quickly passing through back under the bright air. They were identical oval-shaped lights. The lights are dotted with white blinking. The form is oval line with many small dotted white blinking neon lights. They seem to be weightless, but very fast. Each one kept the same distance in a row as they moved. I have never seen a UFO. This is it. young men on motorbikes were flying down from the sky toward me. Each had his own motorbike, and each wore a different color, white, black, yellow, and red. They came down so fast that I only felt the vigorous speed as they evaporated as soon as they reached me. Immediately, I was floating in the air, holding a virtual pole and I felt secure to be there. On my left, the identical pole is floating to guide me. I was following it. Suddenly, it struck against my pole, making a collision, and I saw a big meteor crater underneath filled with beautiful gold. I continued floating in the air with the guide and had a second collision. As it struck my pole a second time, I saw another enormous meteor crater below me with very clean water in it.
Ten days later, I had a car accident on my way home. All of a sudden, on the highway, a car in front of me came to a sudden stop, causing a two-car collision. I did not have time to stop my car, and I hit the car in front of me. My car was totaled, but I was saved by the airbag. In my mind, I saw Jatayu. Jatayu, did you just save me? In Ramayana, Jatayu fought valiantly with Ravana. But as Jatayu was very old, Ravana soon got the better of him. Rama and Lakshmana chanced upon the stricken and dying Jatayu in their search for Shita. Thank you for saving me, Jatayu. But are you already dead after two months from Jakarta? One week later, I went to buy a new car. I got the key for the car. I see the front window of the new car is covered with bird droppings. The dealer was ashamed and apologized intensely. I smiled with joy that Jatayu is alive.
Two months later, I went to Indonesia with an Asian Art Council Fellowship. I was invited to perform my komungo at the Toraja Festival. On the first day, the director of festival and I had a breakfast meeting about the program. He asked me to perform in Toraja Opera that he had prepared with 60 village people. In the opera, I am a spiritual woman performing with village singers and dancers who for centuries have served their funeral rituals. For me, this was a great honor. A lady staff person from the festival was sent to me to check my costume for the performance. As we were approaching my hotel building, I had a feeling of electricity inside my forehead. It was white, dotted, sparkling, but had a round feeling around my head. The sensation was gentle and not at all frightening. Could it be the UFO I saw on the airplane? The dotted, blinking, oval-shaped lights? We are inside my hotel room. The lady looked at me once. Were you called to come to Toraja? I think you are a princess. I said, yes. I feel like I was called to come to Toraja, and I am princess. My name is Golden Dragon Princess. She then voluntarily called someone in Jakarta. She came back with a message from a supernatural person for me. I did not ask her to do so. She did it on her own. She asked, if she was called to come to Toraja, what is her task here? The message was, tomorrow, when she performs at Kete Kesu, all ancestors will come out and bless her. Another message is that I was a Tibetan monk in my previous life. My meditation was not accepted by society, and I lived in a cave. I am reborn to do the proper meditation. Go to the temple. Behind the temple, there is a cave. Inside, there is a bell. Go inside the cave and meditate. This message from a supernatural person who had never met me or talked to me. How shall I find such a specific temple? Suddenly that night, I awoke by a sudden force pushing my back upright in the bed. It was 1 a.m., and a bird came to the balcony of my hotel room and made a persistent sound. Gak, 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 gak. I was visited by a black bird. Kadoya in Toraja, megalithic mountain in West Sulawesi, Indonesia. The bird made very forceful sound eight times in a row. I was shaken by this. Soon, I felt a deep black hole in my stomach that made me little uneasy. I ran to the bathroom in an attempt to escape from the scene, but I quickly decided to accept this mystical, spiritual visit. I had heard many stories about this kind of spirit visit, but I never had such an experience before. I came out of my bathroom, asking the spirit not to harm me or kill me. As soon as I sat down on my bed, the bird again was making the same strong and persistent sound eight times. Next day, I ran into a lady from Bali. She said, it is clear that I was visited by a spirit. And she suggested that I ask for permission to be in Toraja, since I was a foreigner, and it was my first visit to this megalithic land. 
When I asked her how to do that, she suggested for me to put my head on the ground. That afternoon, I looked around the hotel garden to find an appropriate spot to put my head on the ground. The five-star hotel had a very beautifully designed garden in which I found a spot and I kneeled down, putting my head on the grassy ground, asking for permission to be on this magical land. I immediately felt the same electricity on my forehead again. It was real. Something really is happening to me. It is not my imagination. I said to myself, thank you. Thank you for this experience. I am blessed. I walked back with joy to my room and I opened the big balcony doors wide and looked out at the Toraja Valley, asking the spirit to come to me. Soon, I saw an extraordinary, vigorous black bird flying in front of me, the bird flying very fast. It looked like a swallow, but bigger than usual. Debbie. Could that be the bird that visited me last night? On August 11, 2014, 
I arrived at the performance site for Toraja Opera. They had constructed a spectacular outdoor stage at the historical ritual site Kete Kesu. Toraja people believe that their ancestors came from sky, so they are called people of sky. Kete Kesu is built with several tonkonan, which are Torajan ancestral houses. These houses stand high on wooden piles, topped with a layered split bamboo roof, shaped in a sweeping curved arc resembling a boat. They are incised with red, black, white, and yellow detailed wood carvings of many patterns on the exterior walls. According to the Torajan myth, the first Tonkonan was built in heaven on four poles, with a roof made of Indian cloth. Alas, I had had a very special dream after seeing the UFO, about floating on the air, holding poles. Had I dreamed about Torajan ancestors? The Toraja Opera started with a village people parade from rice fields to the Ketekes site. The impressive village singers with orange costumes were approaching singing ancient ritual songs hundreds of years old. The stage was fully packed with these spectacular groups of Torajan village artists. Lastly, I came on with my komungo and realized how blessed I was to be here with these people and their ancestors. I started playing komungo, receiving grand energy from an audience of 20,000. Oh my God, I looked up and saw a huge supersized August harvest moon illuminating the stage. That night, on stage, I was in a grand spiritual ceremony reflecting my entire life journey and felt blessed by the supermoon. The Toraja people, the ancient ritual site Kete Kesu, and the massive audience made me feel this profound fortune and spirituality of this place.
Several days later, I arrived in Solo, Java, Indonesia. I was introduced to a spiritual mentor who has been directing body, motion, and sound workshops for many decades. At our first meeting, he suggested that we might go to a temple to meditate with my komungo. A few days later, he took me to an 8th century Kalaosan temple where female Buddha, Tara, is worshipped. A local young bamboo flute player came along with us. Upon arrival, I noticed a temple board with a picture of a large bell. I was surprised to realize that I was already here at the temple the supernatural person had told me about. I did not say a word to my mentor as he took me inside the cave room. He asked us to meditate and play our instruments. We were individually but simultaneously playing as a group of black swallows came in the cave circling above us. The music was rising all the way to the top of the cave ceiling as the birds swirled around the octagonal cave wall. How was it possible that I was already at the temple where the supernatural person had asked me to go and meditate in the cave? Thank you. 
One month later, I went to Joshua Tree, California, as artist-in-residence at Lou Harrison House. Lou Harrison was my composition teacher at Mills College. Here, rocks are formed by a combination of many geological processes. When moisture is trapped on the surface of the rock, or in the soil long enough, it erodes away some of the minerals forming the rock. Then rain and wind wash away the loosened parts of the rock. Some of the boulders in this magical desert are of grand size. Director Eva Saltis took me to two majestic boulders that are standing straight to the sky, shaped like a standing eagle. The body is very full with gigantic stomach, but the face is sharply carved with strong eagle beak. They were far distance apart, but stood as a gateway to the mountain village. Surrounded by massive piles and piles of odd-shaped rocks, the two eagle boulders were powerful forces. There must be many ancient stories here. Eva said this area was an Indian American habitat and there is evidence of ritual sites. In the past, I might admire the beauty of the site and go on to a new place. But my experience in Indonesia taught me that I must respect the ancestors and the spirits. I had to bring my komungo to the eagle rocks, so a few days later, we went there with my komungo. I climbed up to the bottom of the huge boulder and with Eva's help, managed to put my komungo there. I leaned the komungo against the lower part of the standing eagle body, and I put my hand on it and asked for a blessing. After I sang a few vowels, immediately, a young eagle came gliding straight toward me from the south. Toksuri. I stood still and quietly gazed at the eagle wings spread above me. We were humbled, amazed, and speechless as to what had just happened. We sat down and meditated for a while.
which is I wanted to thank the Fulcher team and all the technicians that have been a part of making this possible. Um, without them, it wouldn't have been possible, so I wanted to thank you guys. Um, I also wanted to thank, uh, yeah, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to thank everybody who made this uh, performance possible, especially wonderful culture hub staff, and also the uh, production director, Billy Clark. Billy, are you? Uh, and every <laughs> okay, uh, everybody uh, who really supports this project. Um, and uh, yes, I had Electric Common Go first time in 1988. It was a really long time ago. That was the first common go, electric common go. And uh, at the time, because a computer program was not available, I was depending on electric uh, guitar devices. So I made a very small uh, common go because they said you cannot have all the big body, you don't need to have a big body, just need a fret. So I, I made a very small one with only fret, and then they said you have to change all the silk string, the common go string is a silk. 
take all the silk, silk string out and the, put the metal string, so then it pick up and uh, take the sound. So when I did that, it, it sounded like an electric uh, guitar. It was uh, like electric congo. And so 10 years later, when com computer program is available, and Alex Lewis was in charge with me that uh, uh, he developed the program for electric congo. So we worked in so long time, and, and then I think we figured out 25 years just developing electric congo. And then I got tired of that. So, <laughs> uh, so I need a new toy. So we talked about the common go bot, common go robot. And that's the, that's the time we met you. Uh, and so um, it's a ghost because we don't have a physical uh, instrument yet. But the robot is about computer programming, brain. We may have to make a brain. So that's what we've been doing. And this is the first step of doing it. Right? Just so we might have to go another 20 years to go. But, uh, <laughs> that's the reality. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the instrument evolved organically over a long period of time, and we kept on adding new things that it was able to do. I'm talking about the electric Kamungo, all the way back in 1988. Right. Um, started out with a relatively simple program. Uh, this, all of this is developed inside a, a language that's called Max, mm -hmm. which is pretty widely used in the performing community and uh, electronic musicians. And uh, so it's just sort of, we kept on going back to it and adding new features to it and we kept on you know, performing with it and changing the way that you reacted to those features. So it was a very sort of uh, back and forth development right. that took a long period of time. And when was the last time we really revised it. Maybe a, as, as recently as a couple of years ago, we've been still adding Actually, features to it. Actually, every year we, we revise, so <laughs> to keep going. It's always something, yes. something to do. Yes. But I think you have to look at it in terms of a refinement of a new instrument. And, you know, at Harvestworks, we're, we're really interested in the research and development of hybrid instruments that are, that are acoustic instruments that have electronic components or that are enhanced in some ways uh, by the, the computer and electronic um, um, electronic devices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, let me see. I guess just started off actually as a fan of what Ginny and Alex were doing. And um, then we started working together on a project uh, 2007, Dig Digital Buddha. Yeah, Digital Buddha. Um, and at that point, I guess I would say that the instrument was certainly, you were using Deep Max MSP yes. mm -hmm. at that point with Alex, but, um, but Gene and I started exploring the, the uh, ways that we could both capture and transform the instrument visually, um, and then also maybe capture aspects of the instrument uh, in more of an abstract sense, and transform that in instrument through video. So at this point, we've used quite a few techniques, uh, especially on Ghost Kamunga Bot, including thermal cameras you saw here, and um, analog video synthesizers, and the whole show is being run with a uh, modular digital um, live media program called VDMX. And there's a long list of things that we've tried, but many more left to try at this right. point. But I thought it was interesting, the, um, the screen in front of the player, is that, or, or the performer, is that a standard uh, configuration? Well, we tried to get the mystical, uh, the atmosphere, mm. and uh, by the way, he had, uh, you used the ledger before, you were mm -hmm. trying to uh, project the image on the floor, on the air, not on the screen, yes. but this space was not really uh, made for that, so, so we, we come up with the idea of screen, right? to make that mystical uh, atmosphere. Ideally, they're, they're the image, images that I'm putting on the scrim uh, and Gene's performance can all merge together into one complete painting. And but the also well. the, the moon, the images in the moon, which I thought, I thought the video design was just awesome, actually. Oh. <laughs> I, I love the live camera and, and the analog stuff and the bird stuff and the, all that stuff. I thought it was really great. Yes. Very nice. Well, we're all just mixing it all together. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions? Yes. I see a hand. Yeah, just following up on what Vincent said about, um, so you were trying to, you didn't want to use a script, you wanted to 
Um, well, the scrim was a choice to get images in the air, essentially. Um, so one way or another, that was always an idea of this project, the, the, the visual performance and the projection design. The idea was to get away from like, oh, there's a movie accompanying the performance. The idea instead was to make ethereal floating images and this is one way we hope to, to get closer to that idea. Well, first time you had the smoke and the completely uh, the huge the smoke machine and it filled oh, yeah. up the space and then he project. <laughs> but you can imagine we can do this. Uh, here, okay, so. okay. But by the way, I see the uh, Kyoko uh, Kitamura. Oh, wow. Yes, she's the one narrator. Why don't you take a oh. bow? Yeah. <laughs> by the way yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I want to know about is um, the decisions about spatializing the sound over the over the six speakers so right can you tell me why uh, what decisions you made in that process right we wanted to separate from the electric common go and then ghost common go bus sound oh so the so ghost common go is the electronic sound there's in two the, different in, uh, right there's, there's, the there's a total of six speakers in here right now the four that are basically around the audience are quad, and that's the, the part that's generated by the ghost. I see. And the two speakers that are... In front of me, it was yeah. a just electric common go. So then you can actually tell oh. the sound that comes in. And then you can spin the sound. There was also mm -hmm. sound effect, not necessarily yeah. ghost, but then sound effect All of that, well. all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so the ghost is basically processed common go. Is that true? Uh, I, I, I trigger a ghost, yeah. <laughs> yeah, trigger. so a little, little bit, th some of it is based on Komongo sounds that have been manipulated, some of it is um, sounds of birds was one of the other sort of thematic things that we, we took right. a look at and took some bird sounds and slowed them down and yeah. did some spectral synth synthesis on them. And, but actually it's a response to what I'm doing. So we do not know when, how there is going to be response. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, she's triggering it with her the sound that's of her right. instrument. And, and, and uh, that's nice because ghost, you don't control ghost. It just comes <laughs> in its own way. So that's the way we just leave it that way. So it just comes randomly. I mean, we made uh, some kind of a uh, frequency which pitch you will trigger. However, my instrument is string. Once it vibrates, <laughs> it's, it's confusing all kind of pitches. So, so this ghost just comes in whenever it wants, you know. Sort of like, we think of it like a seance, right? Cool. That's where we're sort of having a seance. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. yeah, just, uh, I don't know if it's a technical thing, or just the perception that I had, that the scene in Joshua Tree area, the rock formations, it looked like the rock formations were a cutout. I mean, it didn't look like a projection with rock formations. It looked like it had been you know, like cut out, like, like scenery almost, you know, like a piece. And I don't know if that was just what I That's a video effect. Or if it was done that way on purpose. Or... We had a team of ghosts, a stagehand, <laughs> <laughs> the scenery really quickly, and then just... <laughs> now, um, the, I, I'll just say, well, first of all, I'm glad to hear that, um, that you had that impression, um, and thanks for sharing that. But I'll just say one other thing is that uh, those images were three photographs that Jean uh, took. Actually, it's in the story, the story of one of the The real the story. Yes. Uh, and then uh, what I'm doing in the performance is I have a MIDI controller and I just, um, I don't know, about an hour ago put in, a, no, well, hour before the show, put in a bunch of effects. And so I'm just dialing in various effects in, in real time with the goal in my head of, of sort of keeping it a bit mysterious. Like, you know, am I really seeing this? Is it flickering away? You know, is it, uh, and, and trying to play with images on the, the edge of So the photograph, did you project the whole photo or did you cut the photo around? It was the entire photo yeah, it was the entire put entire. through effects that effectively made it look like it was being cut out. But it looked very realistic, like those rocks were right there. <laughs> <laughs>
They're which, big. Which, which also <laughs> means that actually the show is never the same in terms mm -hmm. of video. Right. Music well, too. All, all right. Oh, yeah. 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 So it's really a live performance and yeah. different each time that it's performed. So. How much of the video is in question? Do you know, okay, the squeaky lines are going to always be at this point? Or? Yeah. There, there is a cue sheet, so, okay. yeah. But within the cue sheet, there's, uh, I guess, improvisation. Yeah, we all did the improvisation tonight. <laughs> The improvisation yeah. within the score. In the right. score, yeah. yes. The structured improvisation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, if there's no other questions. Yeah, I have a question. I'm actually really interested in the story because it's really narrative. And the visualization, like everything here is like a, just come together and it really works very well. And because the story is mixing very good into the narrative. Mm -hmm. Have you seen about like make some like a screen animation on the screen like a like, hologram? Like, like, <laughs> well, we could do the animation, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of idea. As, as I said before, this is like a newborn baby, yeah. So we have a long way to go. Yeah, yes, and we really we apply hard. for the grant, so we hope that we get it, <laughs> so we can keep working. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those are experiences are blessing. I mean, completely blessing. I, it, this has only happened in the last four years. I never had this kind of experience, but it just came to me uh, very naturally. I didn't ask for. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it just came to me. It's just completely blessing, and uh, it doesn't happen easily in the city. <laughs> I think we are living with too much of stuff, so we can see it. But uh, Indonesia, Joshua Tree, where it's so quiet, transparent space, then something happened, and I just have that. And it's not something that I'm looking for. It just come to me, and I'm completely blessed for that. Well, thank you for coming, and uh, thank you very the much. Rest of Res Fest. <laughs> yes.